Welcome to the world of direct string synthesis. Where infinite sustain is just the beginning. You can imitate bowing strokes. and woodwinds get great guitar sounds It's a whole new approach to playing guitar. Held in your hand in place of a pick, the Evo creates a magnetic energy field which will keep a metal string vibrating for days. Working in conjunction with your electric guitar pickup, the Evo gives you an extended range of tones, textures, and dynamic control. Let's tune up and play. Most Debo techniques require some practice. If you wish to dwell on one technique, feel free to stop and resume the lesson when ready. Before you start, be sure to read the opening tips and how to hold sections in the handbook. Okay, you ready? Let's do some eboing. Most of the techniques in this guide use the pickup closest to the fretboard. All other pickups should be off. You should lower the volume and treble settings on your amplifier as the ebo dramatically increases your guitar signal. Also, reverb adds a lot to the sound. Now as shown in the first illustration, the bottom or foot of the ebo has two guide grooves, one on each side of the drive channel. These grooves rest on the strings adjacent to the one being driven. The adjacent strings are called support strings and provide a track for the guide grooves. When the ebo is on track, you can feel it without having to look. Turn your guitar volume to about half, then turn the ebo on and use the basic grip as shown in the handbook. Make sure the LED is facing the pickup and keep the ebo over the pickup where it sounds the loudest. If this gets too loud, turn down your amp or guitar. Hold the ebo with the drive channel over the D string and let the guide grooves rest on the adjacent A and G strings. Make sure the guide grooves are flat against these support strings and that the ebo isn't tilted backwards or forwards. Make doubly sure the drive channel isn't pressed against the D string. This can cause buzzing or clanking sounds or stop the string from vibrating. See how you can feel when the guide grooves slide into place? When the guide grooves are in place on the support strings, you can glide the ebo to and from the pickup without lifting it from the strings. Glide the ebo back from the pickup. Hear how the volume decreases and the tone mellows? Now glide up to the pickup until you find the loudest spot. This is the hot spot. Being familiar with your pickup's hot spot is an important part of developing a good ebo technique. Keep the D string sustaining. Now tap and hold the second fret. For immediate Ebo drive response, just tap your fingers onto the fretboard harder than you would when picking. Keep in mind, the Ebo doesn't start the string immediately unless you tap with the left hand or with the Ebo, which we'll discuss later. Don't wiggle the Ebo or try to pick with it. Just rest the guide grooves on the support strings and tap the note you want on the string in the drive channel. Slide up and down the fretboard with one finger. Mm -hmm. 
hammer on ascending scales. Snap off descending scales. The ebow keeps the string vibrating under your fingers so you don't have to pick each note. Just hold the ebow stationary and play the driven string with your left hand. Pressing the ebo more firmly against the support strings brings the drive channel closer to the driven string and increases the drive. This is useful when playing in the higher frets where the string is pulled away from the drive channel. If the string doesn't begin to vibrate as quickly as you'd like, apply more pressure. If the string buzzes against the drive channel, apply less pressure. It feels quite natural. For a fast trill, keep the lower note fretted and rapidly tap and release the higher note on one string. Bear down on the ebow for extra drive. You don't have to snap off the high note, just tap and release like on violin, which is faster. Sustain the A string and tap the second fret. Tap again, and this time lift the ebow slightly off the strings and slap it lightly back into position simultaneously with the tap. Don't let the drive channel hit the string and stay over the hot spot. Bounce the ebow repeatedly and hold one note. Or slide up and down the fretboard with one finger. Tap scales. Tap the fretboard and then tap the ebow onto the strings. Tap a note with two fingers alternately while sustaining the string with the ebow. Now bounce the ebow as you tap for a fast one note spiccato. Countless possibilities. The ebow slides effortlessly from string to string and aligns itself over each string as you cross. Stay over the hot spot. No need to force it or visually line it up. Just get it close and let the guide grooves walk it into place. You don't need to lift the ebow from the strings. Just relax the pressure and lightly push it to the next string. Skipping strings is trickier, but becomes easy with practice. Using the spiccato technique helps. When you get to the E strings, the ebow rests on one support string and you have to balance the unsupported side. The high E string is the hardest to activate quickly, so press the ebow to bring the drive channel closer to the string and tap the fretboard harder with your left hand. The same applies to the B string to a lesser degree. Slide up and down the fretboard with one finger for a more consistent sustain. The low E string vibrates the most freely and may start touching the drive channel. To avoid this, tilt the ebow away from the string, keeping the guide groove in place on the A string.
bear down with the ebow on the high strings. Release pressure and tilt the drive channel away from the low strings. And you should achieve a fairly even response as you play sustaining passages across the strings. Sometimes, when bending a note above the 12th fret, you may need to tilt the ebow away from the string and apply more pressure on the ebow to keep the string from bending out of the energy field. Always keep the guide groove you're bending toward on track. Let's turn our guitar volume up a little. The closer you move the ebow to the pickup, the louder and brighter the sound giving you unprecedented dynamic and tonal control over the string. For quiet, mellow sustain, back away from the pickup. For violin-like bowing strokes, glide the ebow toward the pickup with each note you play. Don't sustain over the hot spot, it may get too loud. Also, keep the ebow away from the pickup when not playing to avoid extraneous noise. Slap the ebow into position over the hot spot and quickly glide it away from the pickup in a reverse bowing stroke. Fade in and out of a trill. Ever heard a guitar solo played back in reverse? For this trick, turn off your reverb. Hold the ebow a quarter inch or more from the pickup and lightly set it into position over the open G string. Don't tap start the G string with the left hand or with the ebow. Just let the ebow slowly vibrate the string into full sustain. Play a short legato line, no breaks between notes. At the same time, slowly glide the ebow towards the pickup and abruptly end the run at the height of the crescendo. Don't get directly over the hot spot until the last note for the most dramatic effect. Play backward spins starting with the string already bent up, then bending down. Bend up, and then in with the string back down. Anytime you want that slow swell into sustain, just hold the ebow in place, Muffle the open string with your left hand over the fretboard, then release it. You can turn your reverb back on. Sustain a note on the low E string. Fifth fret will do. Tilt the drive channel away from the string. Then rhythmically press and release the ebo over the pickup without lifting it from the support string. Play a legato line and get a tremolo effect. Play short staccato notes and get a very clean spiccato. is completely off the tone knob of your guitar and imitate a flute. Press the ebow to help drive the strings. Notice when the tone knob is down, sustaining over the hot spot isn't so loud. 
especially high notes. Play a melody closely associated with the flute to enhance the effect. Muffle the strings with your right palm behind the ebow for a muted horn effect. Press the ebow with each note over the hot spot. Vibrato adds vocal quality. Let's turn our tone knob up to about half. For a pronounced horn sound, move the ebow from string to string and lightly press and release it over each string as you cross. Stay over the hot spot. Simultaneously press and release a chord on the fretboard to enhance the effect. Let's turn our tone knob all the way up. Glide the ebo back from the pickup and play notes below the fifth fret on the E, A, D, and G strings. You should get a harmonic above the note you're playing. Sometimes you need to adjust the ebo's distance from the pickup to get a harmonic. Also, less pressure on the ebo produces a quicker harmonic response. Now slide the note up the fretboard. The harmonic follows up to about the 8th or 9th fret. Once the harmonic is started, you can glide the ebo closer to the pickup. You're probably familiar with the harmonics that you get over the 5th, 7th, and 12th frets. Sustain the A string. Place your left hand over the 12th fret harmonic. Once started, the added harmonic follows from the open string up to about the 8th or 9th frets. A light touch as you tap the fretboard helps keep these harmonics going consistently. Place your left hand over the 7th fret harmonic. This provides a 5th, so you can play a 2 note harmony line on one string. Slide up and down the fretboard with one finger, pressing harder on the fretboard to keep the harmonic going. To avoid harmonics, don't play near the nut of the guitar, the first five frets or so. Instead play the part on a lower string which puts it higher up the fretboard. Or you can muffle the string with your right palm behind the ebo. With most Ebo techniques, you want to keep the drive channel from touching the string being played. This next trick is an exception to this rule. Let's turn our guitar volume knobs to about half. The energy slide technique uses the Ebo like a slide above the fretboard on the E, A, or D strings. Start the low E string, then tilt the Ebo slightly forward and press the drive channel against it. Sometimes, you may need to glide the ebow back and forth a little as you press to get the energy slide started. The resulting high-pitched scream can be slid around by gliding the ebow to and from the pickup, which also changes the volume. Bend and vibrato 
with the drive channel still pressed against the string. Notice how changing frets has no effect on the pitch, but gliding the Ebo does. These next techniques are much quieter. If you've lowered your volume, you'll need to bring it back up to your normal picking volume. Also, return your tone setting to normal if you've cut the highs. Let's begin with a short demo. When bowing across the strings, with the Ebo held directly over the hot spot, each string is amplified instantly as the Ebo passes over. Cross quickly. Don't wait for one string to swell into sustain before moving on to the next. Each string sounds as loud as if you'd picked it. Now we have some fun. Hold the Ebo away from the hot spot and sustain the open A string. Lock your right wrist into position, then glide up to the hot spot and bow back and forth from the A string to the D string and back using arm motion, not wrist motion. Keep wrist locked so the Ebo stays aligned with the strings. Don't lift it from the strings or press too hard. It's important to hold the Ebo over the hot spot when crossing strings quickly. It's too quiet to be heard otherwise. Don't wait for one string to sustain and start getting loud before moving on to the other. Moving the Ebo back and forth between two strings requires a little larger movement than with picking. Keep this back and forth cross string bowing action constant and start fretting the D string. Voila, a cello like pedal tone. Okay, are you ready? Keep wrist locked with the Ebo directly over the hot spot. Hold an A minor chord. Now move the Ebo across the strings from the A string to the B string and back. Arpeggios! Use arm movement, not your wrist. For an even response, cross the strings in a straight line over the hot spot. An arpeggio from E to E requires more practice. Lift the Ebo from the strings to stop cross string bowing. If your bass pickup is a double coil humbucking, cross string bow over the coil closest to the fretboard for a great cello sound. Bounce the Ebo across the strings for a spiccato arpeggio. Mix them up. Create your own combinations. More fun than a human being should be allowed to have. For dynamic control when switching between Ebo techniques, remember to back away from the pickup for sustain. Get close for spiccato. And always stay over the hot spot for cross string bowing effects like pedal tone or arpeggios. For dynamic control of cross string bowing, apply various degrees of pressure on the e bow. The lighter you press, the softer the sound. The more pressure, the louder. It feels very natural. When playing two or three notes per string in quick passage across the strings, keep the Ebo close to the hot spot 
Again, don't wait for each string to sustain. This gives you a nice clean guitar string sound without the conventional attack of a pick or fingers. Hammer on ascending scales, snap off descending scales, and apply pressure on the ebo. Bounce the ebo every now and then for accents. Using distortion with the ebo yields interesting results. That sounds more like a regular pick attack, yet retains those rapid fire arpeggios. And will sustain forever at 3 o'clock in the morning with your headphones on. Distortion gives the high E string a more consistent sustain and extends the sustaining range up the fretboard. Notice the volume doesn't change when you move the ebo to and from the hot spot, so you can sustain, arpeggiate, and use the energy slide directly over the hot spot with little change in volume as you switch techniques. When crossing strings with distortion, play directly over the hot spot to minimize the sound of the ebo rubbing across the strings. And remember to keep the ebo away from the pickup when not playing. Want to make your guitar sound like a harmonica? Fret the 16th fret of the D string and glide the ebo to and from the pickup quickly in a small sawing motion. The whole motion takes place within a quarter inch of space. The idea is to mimic a harmonica's vibrato. Keep the ebo about a quarter inch away from the pickup even at its closest approach in this sawing motion. Notes played above the 12th fret on the D, G, and B strings sound more reed-like. A little extra pressure on the ebo helps drive the high strings, especially in the higher reaches of the fretboard. To repeat a note, lift the ebo from the strings, keeping the sawing motion constant. Then press the ebo back into position lightly to minimize the sound of the ebo hitting the strings. If you have a phase shifter, a light slow phase enhances the harmonica imitation. Playing upstroke arpeggios is a nice effect. Tap the chord onto the fretboard as you start the descending arpeggio. Play directly over the hot spot. Arpeggiate across three strings rapidly. Then add a trill at the top of the arpeggio. Arpeggio up to a tremolando. Hold a chord and downstroke arpeggio across three strings change chords and upstroke arpeggio across the same three strings. Tap the fretboard with each note as you cross 
for a sweep picking type effect. Downstroke arpeggio from the low E to the D string, then from the A string to the G string, so on, and so on, creating an ascending stack of arpeggios. Then upstroke a descending stack in the same manner. This only scratches the surface of what you can do with the Ebo Arpeggio Technique. And now the Tremolando Bowing Technique. Bow back and forth between the D and G strings using the cross string bowing technique we discussed earlier. Now instead of using arm movement to change strings, shake your Ebo hand from the wrist like a rapid downstroke upstroke picking action and keep bowing back and forth between the two strings with wrist action instead of arm movement. Stay with the hot spot. Once you get the hang of this, you can do tremolando bowing effects. Slide up and down the fretboard. Add another note for three note tremolando. Open strings work well with this technique. Note, the highest notes on the high E string, above the 17th fret or so, may not sustain, but you can play spiccato, tremolando, and arpeggios all the way up to the highest fret. Here's one you're going to love. Muffle the support strings with the first finger of your left hand as you hold a note on the driven string and keep the tremolando wrist action going over the driven string. You're almost arpeggiating across three strings, only a smaller motion. Don't let the guide grooves rest on the support strings. Instead, let the string being played enter and exit the drive channel with each stroke down and each stroke up, like cross string bowing over one string. Remember to muffle the support strings. You can rest your little finger on the guitar for nice even strokes. Put your right shoulder into it for bold aggressive strokes. Also keep the support strings muffled with your left hand for a super clean spiccato. I'll leave you with a trick that's a little different. Position your ring finger behind the ebo and pluck the string in the drive channel. Keep the ebo slightly above the strings and about a quarter inch away from the pickup for a bluesy guitar sound. Pluck the string, then bring the ebo close enough to sustain it, but not close enough to overdrive it. This creates a warm tube amp distortion sound. Bends and vibratos work well with this technique. There are more tips in the handbook. Useful information that could be worth your while to look into. Chances are good, you'll find some tricks of your own. Good luck in all your musical endeavors and have fun with your Ebo. Bye.